Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, Mr. President, let me give kudos to the committee which I also belong to. Uh, they have an unhealthy tax of having to deal with a very complicated financial situation that we found ourselves in. Mr. President, we are discussing the medium term expenditure framework as presented by the chairman, also presented to us by the Federal Minister of Finance. Mr. President, there are issues, and we must honestly address them. Some of these issues since 2019 have become a reoccurring decima in all the MTEF that have been presented here. And one of them is what we are talking about, the issue of borrowing and deficit. We now have a situation where we have a deficit that has been growing year in, year out. When is it going to stop? Mr. President, we also have a situation where borrowing has been increasing year in, year out. When is it going to stop? Mr. President, these are issues that agitate the minds of Nigeria, especially when it concerns borrowing. Since we, the President sent a communication here about new borrowing, you know, we've been inundated with all kinds of, of, of questions. So, my concerns and observations on the presentation made by the Chairman are very few, but very germane, Mr. President. First, we have a situation where we have a deficit that has gone beyond the threshold of the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007, uh, which then means that, like I mentioned last year, it's either that we amend the Fiscal Responsibility Act as suggested by the Chairman, so as to accommodate this deficit, because year in year out we have, we've set up a law, and we, either consciously or unconsciously, are breaching it every year. The Fiscal Responsibility Act stipulate a threshold of 3%. Last year, it was above the threshold. This year, it is above by about 6% 6, uh, 6 on that, Mr. President. Now, the chairman with the committee have made effort to reduce the deficit as it relates to GOEs. Mr. President, that has not yielded much result because in this budget, as presented the MTEF, the deficit of the GOEs have increased rather than decreasing. If we look at even their personnel costs, outside of the overhead costs, which has reduced marginally, the personnel costs has increased and even their capital expenditure have increased in spite of the effort that the chairman under his leadership we've tried to make. So what the World Bank has prescribed as their service to ratio of revenue is 25 0.5 percent, Mr. President. The situation we found ourselves now with this budget is that Nigerian debt service to revenue ratio is 67 percent. The implication of that is that every 100 naira that we earn in this Nigeria, 60, 67 naira is used for debt service, which means we have only three naira available to Nigeria to spend. It is very scary, Mr. President, that you are earning 100 naira, spending 67 naira to service debt. It's not even paying the debt. These are very scary scenarios that we must look at. Now, do we continue to borrow or do we look uh, elsewhere for us to get this money? Mr. President, there are areas that we will get. We had the issue of stamp duties, which were addressed in this chambers sometime last year. Now, it has been move core now electronic transfer. Mr. President, we put in 2020 about 500 billion. In this budget, what has come is 29.9 billion. We need an explanation to that, Mr. President. How can you move from 500 billion of stamp duty? We used to call it stamp duties. Federal Inland Revenue themselves in 2020 say that they had a business transaction above 52 tri uh, trillion. If we now multiply that by the stamp duties they collect, Mr. President, there is no way they will present it only 29.9 billion. So if we are serious about addressing the issue of borrowing and reducing the deficit, these are areas I think that the Committee on Finance should be mandated to invite this uh, MD of FRA 
Let us know why he has moved from 500 billion last year to 29 point something billion on stamp duties, which is now for electricity transfer. <coughs> Mr. President, beyond that, I don't know whether Mr. the chairman is an oversight. For the first time, MTF have captured extensively what you call tech tax expenditure. Mr. President, what tax expenditure, the statement of tax expenditure addresses the issue of waivers, deferrals with this thing. If we look at the waivers and deferrals that have been given, Mr. President, those alone are 2.4 uh, trillion. Custom alone is supposed to give tax waivers of 780 billion. Out of that, import duty captured 600 billion. Who are the people who are benefiting from this tax, uh, from these uh, waivers? Which are the companies? And which is the cost benefit? Do we rather give waivers without benefit us more than getting the money? Mr. President, under VAT, is about 900 billion under the tax expenditure. These are waivers on food items. Which are the food items? We need to know. Let these people present us with those items one by one. If we say that under VAT, these people importing these items are not going to pay tax, let us know the items and know the beneficiaries. We'll go to CIT, that is company income tax. Which are the companies that are benefiting? What are they manufacturing? What are they doing? These are things that if we are serious about addressing the deficit and stop extensive borrowing, Mr. President, we must look into this. These are very serious issues that are presented here. Tax expenditure this is the first time they are presenting it. Uh, the chairman didn't capture it. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know why he didn't do that. Mr. President, we also, in managing an economy, we, we need to combine fiscal policies with monetary policies. Mr. President, the central bank has failed woefully under monetary policy. If we look at the MPR that they have just set up now, MPR, that is the monetary policy rate red that goes to commercial banks. It's about 11.5%. Now, you, you loan money to commercial banks at 11.5%. Mr. President, none of us here, when you want to take money, it's about 20-something. The lease is 19%. The saving rate is 1%. That means that the, whole, the entire of the middle class has been wiped out because no person can go into mortgage. If you go to borrow, is prohibitive. If you want to save your money, you only get 1%, which means nothing. That means that the central bank doesn't know what they're doing. So if we leave the monetary policy that they're trying to uh, address, every time, year in, year out, is 11.5%. You go to borrow, is 20-something. You go to save your money, is 1%. No middle-class person will ever go and say, I'm getting a loan to go and build a house. The middle class in this country is gradually uh, going. Mr. President, the fiscal policy as presented by the Minister of Finance on issues of tax. If that's serious, you won't be giving these waivers in a budget that your deficit is 4 point something. You are giving waivers of 2.4 trillion. You won't do that. So it is either that we are serious and we call these people to come and make presentation because we need to know, we need to serve Nigerians. We are the people who are inundated when we go to our villages or all kinds of demands. Those people sit in air-conditioned offices, nobody goes to them for any demand. You go, you step out here, you open your phone, you say, my wife is giving birth, I'm marrying two wives, I'm marrying another one. It becomes a... Uh, Senator Zuswam, has anybody come to you because he wants to marry his second wife? <laughs> now... And so, Mr. President, let us, let us, I, and this is very, very important. The CBN governor should be invited before the entire house. Let him come and explain to us exactly what the monetary policy of this country is and why it will be impossible for me to go and save and get something more. And then if I want to borrow, I can't borrow. Let him come here so that we combine both the monetary policy and physical policy and be able to address... You can, you can round up now so that others are able to speak, please. In rounding up, Mr. President, I want to suggest that in addressing the issue of deficit 
in our budget that Nigeria have joint ventures with a lot of this, especially in the oil sector. And with the passing of the PIBA, why can't Nigeria divest a little bit in some of these joint ventures so that we can raise more money in order for us to address this? And then even in collecting tax on PPT, the less holdings we have in this joint venture, the more of royalties and tax that we can collect from PPT. And so it serves us better now to divest a little bit of our holding in joint cash because the money that you pay for joint venture cash calls, Mr. President, is unsustainable. So let us, my suggestion is that let us divest some of our interest in some of the joint venture. We'll reduce paying joint venture cash calls. We will receive more tax from PPT, petroleum profit tax. We'll receive more tax from royalties. That will enhance our money and then we'll reduce the issue of unsustainable borrowing that we're engaging now. And then our budget gradually uh, will be able to reduce. At some point, we hope that we'll have a balanced budget uh, in this country before the end of this administration. Mr. President, I saw something.